why do you think that organisations aren't actually already doing this typically um, in terms of that, that proactive, you know, hazard identification and risk assessment approach? Well, to quote a really intelligent person, I know everything is garbage. <laughs> um, so the, the tools, I think, that are currently in existence that claim to be psychosocial risk assessments a garbage. Uh, a garbage. They yeah. have not changed in 20 years. Um, I mean, if you think about the HSC stress indicator tool, for example, it's probably the first popular example of a psychosocial risk assessment. Um, but really, they don't give the information required to satisfactorily understand and then address risks and, and monitor them over time. Um, these tools are typically employ perception style measures, um, which I'll say when trying to understand psychosocial risk is very dumb um, in that they don't great, give us great information. Um, to understand the likelihood that someone is going to have an adverse psychological health reaction based on hazard exposure to psychosocial hazards, uh, we need to understand the severity, frequency and duration of exposure to that hazard. If all we're getting from a employee perception style survey um, from a risk assessment is, you know, do you work to demanding deadlines or do you work very fast and you have to, uh, you know, respond on a like it type style response, seven point scale, let's say, from strongly agree to strongly disagree. doesn't tell you the severity of the stress experienced based on that element of work design. doesn't give you the frequency and duration of stress because we know that people have different preferences, right? Some people like a heavy workload. Some people like to just be told what to do. Yet we automatically assume that work overload or um, lack of um, uh, autonomy um, are hazards and, and people will experience stress based on exposure to that. So these tools are dumb in that they don't pick up on that nuance that people have different working style preferences and not all work design elements will affect people in the same way. Um, and if all we're getting as an outcome from these measures is, hey, on a seven-point rating scale, you got 5.1, and we're going to compare you to a benchmark, which is across industries, um, and the benchmark, let's say, is 5.2. What do you do with that information? What does it tell you? It just tells you that maybe you're doing slightly better than a benchmark, but what does a benchmark mean? Um, on that result, what's the likelihood um, and consequence of harm? Well, it doesn't tell you that. So really, um, I would say that these tools are not psychosocial risk assessments. At the, the very best, I would say, they're hazard identification so it might give you some idea about what are the main hazards that are present in different work environments. But to understand the risk, then you have to then really unpack the results of those surveys in focus groups or interviews. And then you end up with a qualitative risk assessment. So we might as well go, lick our finger, put it up in the air and go, okay, well, on this quadrant, we believe the risk is there. Um, and the problem is when you take that sort of information up to a board or exec level, you go, based on our focus groups, these are the main hazards that we identified. Um, it's hard to then go, well, is this actually quantifiable data? Is this a real risk that we're seeing here? Or is it a bunch of people who had nothing better to do on a Wednesday afternoon and had a free afternoon tea and they just want to have a bit of a winch? 